for me, since I don't watch Raw, thankfully, learned my lesson there, I thought AEW was going to be the worst show of the week. This Dynamite was bad. And then good old SmackDown didn't let me down on Friday night. God, what a piece of crap. Oh, God. Just god-awful. Again. Like, why Baron Corbin? And before the idiots tell me that he gets real heat and he does this and gets that, he might get a reaction. And we know the WWE has convinced all of you that as long as you get a reaction, whether it's the right reaction or not, does not matter. They're in the reaction business, da 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 But if Baron Corbin was getting the type of heat that you ascribe to him, if Baron Corbin was getting the type of heat that you allege that he gets, the arenas would all be sold out. The viewership numbers would be higher than they are. He ain't it. He ain't it. And WWE needs to stop going down this crap road with him just so that way they can serve him up to Roman Reigns. Because it's not helping Baron Corbin. It's not helping Roman Reigns. It's not helping your viewership numbers. It's not helping your ratings. It's not helping you in the key demo. It's not helping you anywhere. And even when you look at the way the first half hour of SmackDown went down, it's a long, lame-ass promo segment with Baron freaking Corbin to build up to a match between Roman Reigns and Bobby Roode, even though Baron Corbin's out there, even though <laughs> Dolph Ziggler is out there too. Did you ever have any doubts that Roman was winning this match? Did you have any doubts or any reason to care? It's a shame. You're looking at Bobby Roode and you're like, you know what? That's a wrestler, man. You should be able to do something with him. And instead, they just waste him. Just waste him. Like Roman versus Roode should be just a regular standalone single storyline. You can potentially get a little mileage out of that. Rude could actually work as a heel and get a little bit of a heat doing that. But instead we do this and nobody gets over more for it. It just sucks. And you look at the half hour go by and you said, what the hell is the point of all this? Which is so often the case with these WWE shows nowadays. Mustafa Ali, Drew Gulak. Apparently the reason for this match involves a PowerPoint presentation. Who gives a crap? If you're not going to do 205 Live... Then figure out something better to do with these guys or don't have them on this show and bring it down either. Oh, he's the... What, what, what is it? I mean, what is it with him? Why, why, why is it such a big deal? What's so special about Mustafa Ali? What's so special about Drew Gulak? And why do I care about this match? I don't. And a lot of other people didn't either. It wasn't nearly as bad as that promo segment, though, featuring Sasha Banks and Bailey and Lacey Evans. When you hear Sasha Banks on the mic, sometimes you hear the potential to do more. And you can see where the scripting is just so bad and it holds her back. Like she doesn't get to truly be the boss bitch that she alleges to be and her character should be. And it shows in segments like this. And Bailey, after all of this time, the next acting lesson she gets will be the first acting lesson that she gets. It just doesn't work. The heel stuff just doesn't work. It's like she's non-committal to it. It's like she doesn't care. And again, whoever writes the promos for the show should be ashamed of themselves. Ashamed of themselves. Because you can just sense... Like, you can sense when something feels organic and something feels like it's kind of natural. And they're maybe working off a talking point, but they're kind of reacting to what the crowd is doing. And they, they kind of figure it out as they go versus everything is kind of planned out and it goes together too perfectly. And it just, it doesn't work. Everybody knows your shit is scripted. That doesn't mean every single element of it has to be scripted. And why all of a sudden now are we supposed to get behind Lacey Evans? I thought we were supposed to be nasty or something or whatever the hell. Like, you know, you got Sasha and Bailey ripping off the Seth thing about bashing the women's roster and bashing SmackDown for losing at Survivor Series. It's like, it's like, who cares? Who cares? And who continues to put Bailey in these situations as a heel where you put her in a microphone where a complete lack 
of basic promo skills, and more importantly, her lack of basic acting skills, are criminally exposed to everybody. I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, you look for, I mean, you look for really good things that happen on the show, a few and far between. It certainly wasn't Nikki Cross and Sonya Deville. It was the whole purpose of this match, so Mandy Rose could say that stupid little line before the match started? Who gives a crap? Like, what's the point of this? Just to set up Alexa Bliss returning and making the save as a babyface? Oh, boy. Because Alexa's so much better off as a babyface, right? <laughs> Oh, my God. Perhaps the one real highlight of the night, though, was Drake trying to get freaky with Batista's chick, Dana Brooke. He's got mistletoe. You know how big Batista's dick is because she was able to resist Drake Maverick's mistletoe. And Elias is back! Hey! I could probably have done without the white people dancing from Dana Brooke, you know, like, <laughs> mayonnaise, potato salad, mayonnaise, potato salad. I love my raisins and potato salad. I love my mayonnaise and every damn thing. White people. I could have done without all that dancing. That off rhythm snapping, you know, as white people are prone to do. But this was like the highlight of the whole night for me, which is this explains just how bad this show was. And we're gonna take two hours of my Friday night. It better be better than this. If you're gonna say, well, if you don't like it, don't watch. Well, here's the thing: I already stopped watching Raw. I tried to give SmackDown a try for a little while. Telling me that doesn't really make me feel any type of way because I haven't hadn't been watching SmackDown consistently for a long damn time, and I could just as easily go right back to not watching it again. And then continue to do this crap. That's exactly what the hell I'm gonna do. This is horrible. The New Day's open challenge, just so that way you have Cesaro now paired with Shinsuke, and then they still lose anyways. Again, what the hell's the point? And again, if Kofi's still not ever going to be bothered about the way he jobbed out to Brock Lesnar for that title, then why should I care about him? Why should I care about Big E being continued to force down this stupid tag team path? Why should I care about any of that at all? And I don't. And I don't think a lot of other people do either. Just saying. Obviously, your predominant storyline throughout the night was the shenanigans and happenings with The Fiend and Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan. And I'll say first, in terms of the new face, well, maybe it was the belt, maybe it wasn't. But if it was the belt, I guess The Fiend has his own title. Does that mean you can charge $6,500 for it on the WWE shop? Christ almighty. And if anybody's actually stupid enough to buy that thing, you want to throw $6,500 down the damn toilet, you know what? Send me two stacks, and I'll get you way more return on your investment than that crap. Good Lord. But even here, with, with The Fiend... It's like, I thought The Fiend was separate from Bray Wyatt, but now he's talking about their, it seems like, kind of one in the same. Like, can we, can we not have anything nice anymore? Can we not keep any continuity of character at all? Is that too much to ask? Is that too much to ask? And then your big payoff at the end of the night is Bray Wyatt challenging Daniel Bryan again. Why? So that way the Fiend can come out from underneath the ring, come through the ring, drag Daniel Bryan down, and apparently trim his pubes and just pull up the wall of the damn scene. Is that the new face you're going to give us? Is Daniel Bryan with a shaved head? That was Daniel Bryan with a mohawk or something, or some type of tight fade that may be. If this is going to be a standard white boy cut, then no thank you. We've seen that face before. We don't need to see it again. They're going to ruin them. Take one of the fun, unique things, and they're going to ruin them. I mean, thank God we got to see the muscle man dance and stuff this week. That was fucking awesome, too. I take it back about the Elias thing. That was great. But the muscle man dance and 
<laughs> Bray Wyatt talking about the freaking reptilians and the Illuminati was phenomenal. Phenomenal, crazy back stuff. Husk is sitting there doing the dance. Fantastic. But that's about all you got out of this week's show. Like the rest of it just thought felt like a plop together who gives a crap smackdown. Like, what do you see here that's really supposed to get you excited about the next pay-per-view in a few weeks in TLC? What, Roman versus Baron Corbin? Please. You know, none of the lady stuff is intriguing whatsoever. None of the other stuff that happened on this show outside of Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan hasn't even remotely intrigued for the next pay-per-view. So again, if you're not going to give a crap, why should anybody else? Now, I don't even know at this point. Is SmackDown... Part of TLC? Is that a Raw only pay per view? Is it a co branded pay per view? Like, I don't know. And I don't even know that I bother to care at this point. Like, doing decent wrestling, like, not every show has to be great, but doing decent wrestling or hell, even decent sports entertainment cannot possibly be this hard. Like, you don't even have a third hour to deal with. You've got two hours. Tighten your stuff up, Vince. Because this was just awful. 